During the Cold War with the Soviet Union, an unknown senator from Wisconsin named Joseph McCarthy came to hold a great deal of power over the American public. McCarthy made the bold claim that there were subverters within the United States working for the Soviet Union, the communist power of the world, and, more importantly, the bastion of secularism which opposed the West. Western powers, mainly the United States, had been waging an ideological and informational war against the Soviets for a few years by 1950 and committed themselves to defending Christian and Western values against the looming Marxist threat. Joseph McCarthy was a historical embodiment of such a struggle. McCarthy has been historically vindicated in his remarks, as it is unequivocally true that the Soviets invaded and infested systems within the American public and private sectors, most notably the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Central Intelligence Agency, House of Representatives, Judicial System, and American Higher Academia. The effects of this still resonate today as our congressmen advocate publicly for socialist policies, while Ivy League schools indoctrinate generations of students under the watchful eye of organizations like the Open Society Foundation who seek to undermine America as a country. It is simply true that Joseph McCarthy was one of the most unjustly persecuted individuals in United States history, and our country's rejection of his valid concerns have led us to losing the Cold War not on the physical front, but the ideological front. Figures like Yuri Bezmenov warned us of the same Soviet subversion which McCarthy talked about, and yet we ignored their calls. The United States was, at the time, still a free country which operated within the confines of Western morality, which led us to vehemently oppose Marxism. This allowed Americans to see clearly the Soviet infiltration of our great societal systems and find the black sheep, so to speak. However, as accusations began to fly from those simply attempting to accumulate power and influence, the waters were muddied. All of this great reorganization of power by corrupt individuals who sought to ride McCarthy's bandwagon led to the intense demonization of his name within the history textbooks. The truth is, the abuse of power and false accusations thrown up by bad actors during what is known as the Red Scare have all been attributed to the general umbrella which is McCarthyism. The valid accusations which have been historically vindicated by the Venona Project and the likes have been mixed in with baseless claims about business competitors or political rivals, and have all been attributed to McCarthy's name. This isn't to say McCarthy was without fault. He did make accusations that proved false, or at least have not yet proven to be true, but nevertheless was vital in the war against Soviet ideological subversion. A war which we seem to have forgotten ever happened, possibly because the Soviets won, which is why Yuri Bezmenov's predictions have almost all come true. McCarthy's fate took a turn for the worse after some time when he attempted to accuse members of the military of being communist infiltrators. He was publicly shamed on television and his favor with the public spiraled down the drain. He was censured and stripped of any and all power he had in the public eye. This public humiliation of Senator McCarthy is not unlike the humiliation which truly conservative politicians like Paul Gosar or even President Trump have been subject to. It can be said that McCarthyism is, in fact, one of the greatest examples of conservatism within America. This is because political power was utilized in an efficient manner to rid the country, or attempt to rid the country, of something which sought to destroy it. To even make the claim that assuming power to fight an ideological force which seeks to destroy your nation could be wrong is absolutely ignorant to the reality of power politics. Marxism seeks to decimate the West. It is the antithesis to Western morality and the framework upon which America and the larger Western world were built. Thus, when Marxism subverts and seeks to uproot on the bastion of Western power and influence, we must fight back. Simply withering away and yelping about how McCarthy was usurping power or revoking people's individual rights and freedoms is, simply put, pathetic and wrong. This is the framework which led to the concept intellectual diversity, a term used by Marxists to create an age of moral and factual relativism, think the my truth, not the truth crowd, which allows Marxism to rise up as a dominant the truth within a country yearning for a truth. 
The systems which sought to launch this era of intellectual diversity were, once again, Higher Academia and the Open Society Foundation. They quite easily trapped conservatives into adopting the concepts which lead to a totalitarian regime swiftly taking power and shifting the ideological Overton window, while they simultaneously demonized the figure who looked to truly conserve America and protect it from the secular, immoral, eastern ideology. We, as Americans, let literal communists destroy our country, and then they had the audacity to write whole books bragging about how they did it and how effective it was. We have been stuck in this endless loop of upholding freedom for freedom's sake rather than freedom as a means to serve God and serve our country. We should not be ashamed of this, though. This ought to make us angry. Angry at those in power who feed us the lies of the Soviet intellectuals who write our textbooks and indoctrinate our youth. This should make us angry at the fake conservatives who view any power as evil and tyrannical rather than a tool to be utilized for the betterment of American society. Angry at the politicians who are blinded by the pursuit of power and earthly influence, money and connections, too foolish to recognize how quickly they are killing their country and people. We ought to be angry at the society we have fostered, which replaced physical pain for psychological pain. This passion for true Americanism is a tool which, if used correctly, can turn the tides of the nation's fate. Our country does not have long before its unsustainable system collapses, so we must take back the system which has been subverted rather than mope around and argue within the ideological framework built by the Marxists. It is crucial to the survival of this country and the conservation of the Western ideal, the ideal McCarthy spent a life and a career trying to uphold. Today, we need more, not less, McCarthy's. He was demonized by the left because he recognized the threat of internal subversion. The right wing cowers at the accusation of McCarthyite. It's time for that to change. I'm Josh Sullivan with the American Populist Union.